Okay, so uh, yesterday uh, we started to, to introduce all the machinery which is needed to, to construct a non-measurable set, okay? I just recall you that the fact that we, uh, we introduced a new operation, we said that x uh, sum modulo 1 with y, when you take x and y in uh, uh, this interval, okay, is equal to the <coughs> classical sum if, uh, x, if x plus y is less than 1. Otherwise, you have to subtract 1 if, in the other case, if x plus y is larger or equal than 1. Okay, we also observe that in any case, you have that the supremo is 2, and so you always end up within, uh, within the, the same interval, okay? Okay, then uh, I, we, we saw that uh, uh, we introduced the notion of translation modulo 1. And we saw that also uh, under this notion, the measure is preserved. Um, and we, we just mentioned that we will use the, the axiom of the choice to construct uh, this non-measurable set. Okay, so we introduce this relation, x is, uh, is equivalent to y if and only if x minus y is a rational number. And then we introduce uh, this, this function f whose domain is k. k is uh, the set, uh, um, I mean, the set of the equivalence classes uh, um, corresponding to, do, to this uh, uh, equivalence relation, which values in uh, 0, 1. So to any equivalence class here, we as can associate a, a, a small c. Um, so we can select this c thanks to the, the axiom of this choice. Axiom of the choice. OK, and then uh, we said that t we give this definition, t is the, the range of f and t, of course, is in 0, 1. So what we are going to prove now is that the t, this set t, is indeed non-Lebesgue uh, measurable, OK? Okay, so the theorem is the following. Okay, the set T <coughs> is not mm. the bag measurable. Okay. Okay, so we start. So here will come the notion of some other one. So we start by considering an enumeration of the rational number in zero one, and we call it let R i from zero to infinity be an enumeration of rational number in zero one
And for instance, we choose R0 to be exactly 0. OK, so we start by considering the translation modulo 1 under this uh, uh, enumeration. So we define let ti will be t uh, translation modulo 1 of ri. So in particular, you have that t0 coincide with t. OK. So the first thing that we can observe is that this ti, this set here, are pairwise disjoint, OK? OK, so because we have that ti intersected tj are equal to the empty set for any i different than j, OK, the proof is quite simple. So you assume that there exists some element x in the intersection. OK, so it would have the form x would be equal simultaneously to some t1 plus uh, some model 1, of course, r uh, i equal to some t2 plus r j. And we have, of course, that t1 uh, and t2 belongs to t, by definition. With, OK. So you have that, um, OK, you have that t1 minus t2 belongs to, to q. Uh, OK, you, you can do the, there are, I mean, in any case, it would belong to, to I, I think there are three options. Either it is equal to Rj minus Ri, or it should be uh, Rj minus Ri minus plus 1, or Rj minus Ri uh, minus 1. In any case, this difference will uh, give you a rational number, OK? So by definition, we have that uh, T1 is uh, in relation with T2, because the difference belongs to Q. But by construction, T has only one element from each equivalent class. class of equivalence and so we have that T1 is equal to T2 and then you can also if you do some algebra you can also see that also R1 is equal to R2 so uh, So we get uh, what we want. OK, so we have that. This collection TI is, is a sequence of pairwise disjoint. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and J is a sequence of disjoint, um, OK, of pairwise disjoint, OK, uh, set. OK. OK, then. We 
we see that if we take the union, okay, so we have that another another remark is the following that that we have that each x in zero one is in some in some class of equivalence and so it is equivalent to some element in T. OK. OK, but if x so differs from a from an element in T by the rational number put uh, Ri, <coughs> okay, then we have that x belongs to Ti, okay. So thus we have that actually these are a covering of our interval uh, zero one, okay. So now we, we state two properties of this set Ti, okay. So we, we show that they are disjoint and their union give you um, zero one, okay. Okay, now, so at the end we want to prove that T is, is not measurable. So now we argue by contradiction, okay? We assume that T is measurable. Okay, assume that T is, is measurable. Okay. And this may be answer to your question of two times ago, of two lectures ago, no? That you ask for a counterexample about the uh, the countable additivity property. You remember? Okay. So assume that T is measurable. Uh, okay. So we have that since uh, uh, Ti uh, are defined as the translation modulo one of T, so they are measurable as well because we proved yesterday and they have the same measure. So Ti are this, this would imply that Ti are measurable and uh, uh, the measure of T would be equal to the measure of, uh, of Ti, okay? Okay, now we want to use the two facts that we just proved. So we want to see that the measure of, uh, we want to compute the measure of this interval and we know that this interval is given as the countable union of this Ti, which are disjoint, is measure of Ti. Okay. Okay, they have the same measure. So this is the measure of T. Okay, so here we have 
two options for this right hand side. So either is zero or it is plus infinity, okay? But here we know how to comp this is an interval, so the measure coincides with the length. So this is a contradiction, okay? We get a contradiction. Okay, so basically t does not belong to the measurable, it's not measurable. Okay, um, from, this, uh, from this construction, there are many other uh, consequences. Okay, the first one is the following proposition. Okay, which tells you that if you start, if you consider a measurable set E, so can you see the, the blackboard? I mean, not, not the black for <laughs> what is written. If E is measurable, okay, and uh, and E is a set which is contained in that set, that non-measurable set T. Then there is only one option for E. The measure of E must be zero. Okay. Okay, so the proof is easy. Okay, again, we start by an enumeration of the rational number that uh, I uh, be an enumeration of rational number. In, um, in zero one, okay, and again this time, in analogy with, with what we did, we define this set E i as E translation modulo one of uh, uh, R i. Okay, so we have that EI are disjoint. Okay, we can you can do the same argument before, or rather you can just observe that EI are contained in TI. TI are disjoint, so they are also disjoint. Okay, then, uh, okay, this is a, a quite trivial observation. You have that uh, since, uh, okay, E, you have E is measurable, E i are measurable as well. And then, of course, also the reunion <sighs> over Ri is measurable. It's a countable unit. Okay. 
Okay, then you have that, the measure of EI is equal to the measure of E because it's a translation modulo one. And then, so we observe that Okay, each EI is contained in this interval. So the reunion should, the countable union will also be contained in that interval. Okay. Okay, so by monotonicity, We have that one is larger or equal than the measure of the union of EI RI. Okay, they are measurable, EI are measurable and disjoint. So this is equal to the sum of the measure of EI, okay, which is uh, um, equal to the measure of E and so again the only possibility is that the measure of E is, uh, is zero, okay because this is bounded from above by one, okay? So this is. Okay, now we prove another proposition. Okay, this proposition is that tells you that for any okay, for any set E, actually it doesn't matter if it is measurable, whether it is measurable or not. But what is important that the outer measure of V is uh, uh, positive. You have that you can find there exists set F, which is contained in E, such that F is not measurable. Okay, so before proving, uh, we, we start by a very uh, simple remark. We have that if you consider uh, this set E 
intersection with this interval n n plus i, uh, there must exist exist at least one uh, integer n. Um, such that uh, e okay put it n bar e intersection n bar n bar plus one has uh, a positive um, outer measure Okay, this comes from you can I mean, from the fact that this has positive outer measure and these are disjoint because if not, you can easily find uh, achieve a contradiction. Okay, because. Uh, you, you, you see that E, you can see E as the union over N of E intersected N, N plus I. Maybe it's better to put it like this. So if M star of E intersection N N plus I is equal to zero for any N, then what you get? Then we have that M star of E. You use the um, countable subadditivity properties less or equal than N M star of uh, E intersection and N plus I. And so if it, this is zero, you will get that M star is zero, but we, we started by assuming that M star of E is positive. So you would get a contradiction. Okay, so there must, there must exist an in, in integer N bar that such that this set has positive outer measure Without loss of generality, we can assume that n bar is equal to zero, okay? Otherwise. Okay, so with no loss, with, uh, no loss of generality, we may assume that n bar is equal to zero. Okay, so define A set A <coughs> as E intersected 0, 1, okay? So here is n dot n plus 1 with n equals 0, okay? Hmm? We may... Uh, okay, so we have that and star of A as positive outer measure, okay? Okay, then we define, so let us define the set AI as the intersection between A and the set TI, okay? A intersected TI. Okay, this is contained in A which is contained in E. OK, 
Okay, so uh, assume somehow we argue again by contradiction. So if we assume that uh, the sequence of set AI are measurable for any I, what we get? Okay, then by uh, the previous proposition, Okay, what we have? Okay, uh, we have that. We have that. Since uh, uh, EI, AI is contained in TI, then the measure of AI must be zero. Okay, we have that EI are, we are assuming that they are, are measurable, AI are disjoint. And we, are, we have that, and the union of this EI gives you I, it's a covering. So what we have, we have the the outer measure of A <coughs> is less or equal than the outer measure of AI, which is equal to zero. Oh, okay, here maybe we can, okay, but we were assuming that the outer measure of A was positive, so we get a contradiction, okay? Okay, so we prove, we proved our, our proposition. You, you, here you can, yeah, under our hypothesis we can, I mean, uh, you can also get rid here under our hypothesis, okay, but. Yeah. Okay, now. <coughs> okay, we will change a bit argument now. And we we will try to construct um, the Cantor set. Maybe you already know the Cantor set. No, <laughs> according to your face. Okay, the Cantor set is uh, in. It's worth it to study it because you can define, for instance, has a very nice property. And it is somehow a building block to construct a counter function we, that will provide you many uh, counterexamples. We will see later on when we will introduce, uh, um, we will study the, um, the function of bounded variation, the function, uh, the absolute continuous function. So we will see that the counter, the counter function will come in, in that tier. May I raise? Okay, so we will construct it by 
some drawings basically okay so. okay so you consider first this interval okay so it's a bit uh, okay, yeah, consider the interval 0, 1. Okay, so we want to construct a set, and we will do this by approximation, okay? The Cantor set I will call, I will denote it with the letter K, okay? And now I will start, uh, I will show you the construction by the drawing, which is maybe the, the, the simple things. And uh, I will call each approximation of the counter set Kn, okay? So here we are at the, the step zero of the construction. So the first approximation of the counter set is K0, which is the entire um, interval, okay? Then this is the approximation zero. Then the approximation one is the following. Uh, again, you consider this interval eh? yeah 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 so you consider one over third one over three and two over three consider the open interval this open interval in the middle and you define k1 as 0 1 minus this open interval in the middle, so 1 over 3 and, and 2 over 3. Okay. Uh, okay, you can, uh, let me just, because it will be useful, then you, this is also 1 over 3, a union of two closed interval, 2 over 3 and 1. Okay, so this is... Uh, 2 uh, rise to the power 1 because we are on the step 1 closed intervals okay maybe you understand how the things going on uh, the, the approximation 2 will be the following you, you again start by uh, 0 1 Actually, you start by the, the approximation one, so where this interval, open interval in the middle, have been uh, removed. Okay, I see you remove this. And then you focus in these two interval, no? And you, uh, you took this time an interval in the middle here and an interval in the middle here and you remove it. So in that case will be one over nine and uh, two over nine. So you remove it. And again here you will have seven, seven over eight and eight over, yeah, 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 over nine, sorry and 8 over 9, and you remove it. Okay, it's a kind of fractal procedure somehow. So you have that, the step 2, the approximation 2 is what? Is uh, uh, 0, 1, mi minus this collection, you have 1 over 9, uh, 2 over 9, then the big interval in the middle, so 1 over 3, 2 over 3, and 7 over 9, and 8 over 9. Okay, so here you, you removed You have that, no, uh, you remove, you, it's made up of uh, 2 to the 2, 4, because you have 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, closed 
intervals. Okay, so now we understand how the things are going on. At the step n, okay, I cannot draw here, but you will end up with an approximation kn, which is made of 2 to the times 2 to the n closed um, intervals. Okay, now you will define the Cantor set as the countable intersection of all uh, this approximation Kn. Okay. Okay, so the Cantor set. K is what is the approximation of this Kn. Okay, moreover, you observe that Kn are a decreasing sequence, okay, by construction. And, uh, okay, by this you know that it is, it is closed because it's a countable intersection of closed set. And... Uh, and you can also, um, from this, you can also say that k, we are not talking about the empty set because otherwise it would be uh, useless, okay? No, it's different from the empty set. This is, you can see it in uh, two ways. One thing is that this is uh, uh, the intersection of compact set which are contained one in another. Or in a very easy, easy way, you can just say that, for instance, the element 0, 1, and all the endpoints are, are contained, okay? Because so I, I, you can see this as because the point 1, okay, 1, 0 are contained. So another thing is that, that we can observe is that uh, okay, since K contains, we just remarked that K contains all these endpoints, this means that uh, the set K is, is at least countable, okay, because it contains uh, uh, a countable, uh, uh, a countable um, sequence of, of points. But we shall see that K is more than countable, is not countable, okay, we will, okay, we will, we will prove it later on. And indeed K, we will show that K has the same cardinality of, uh, of the interval 0, 1. Okay, then now we prove that the Cantor set has measure zero, okay? Cantor set as Okay, the fact that it's measurable comes from the fact that it is constructed as intersection of closed set. Okay. okay, so we have that. First of all, focus on the measure of the approximation, Kn. Okay, this is easy. Somehow they are, we saw that they are made of 2 to the power n, 1 of 3n, which is 2 over 3 n and then we have that the measure of k now we use uh, a proposition that we show uh, some some lecture ago so the measure of k is 
by definition is the measure of the intersection of this set. So this approximation, this is by a former proposition, by a former proposition, but we also need to apply this former proposition, the fact that the measure of the first one or one, one of them is finite. Okay, this is of course true because we are within the, the interval. Okay, so this is equal to the limit as n goes to plus infinity of the measure of kn, which is 2 over 3 to the n, so which goes to 0. So by now we can say that the counter set has measure 0, but at the same time has the same cardinality of 0, 1. So this is somehow something new. Okay. Okay, now we will see that another another property of this set that the counter set has empty interior, okay? So the counter set has empty interior. Okay, so k, uh, I will denote with this dot at the top of k to denote the interior is equal to. Okay, so before proving this, I just recall you, uh, so recall the following property. Uh, okay, so let U be an open set okay then if U is not the empty set then the measure of u must be positive because this is true because any open set in the real line must contain a non-degenerate interval, okay? Okay. Okay, again, we argue by contradiction. We assume that this is not empty. Okay, so we argue by contradiction and we assume that K, the interior of K is not empty. Okay, so the interior, of course, is open. Then there must exist an open set U. Okay, such that is contained in K and such that The measure of u is positive, so and this is absurd because we just proved that the measure of the counter set is zero. Okay, so indeed we have that <coughs> k is is the empty set. Okay, then. So we, we, we are investigating some 
topological property of, uh, of the counter set, okay? Okay, now we focus on, um, on the complement of the counter set. And we see that the complement is, is, is dense in, uh, in zero one. Okay, so another fact is that KC, which is the complement of the counter set is dense. in zero one. Okay, this comes from the fact that this is empty. Okay, so we have that since is empty. Okay, we have that the closure. That the closure of the complement is uh, all uh, the interval zero one. Okay, then from this it comes also the fact that the measure of KC is equal to the swan minus the measure of K which is which is one okay but this is zero just prove okay um Okay, now we have somehow an example of a set which is dense in zero one and uh, has the same measure of zero one. But the fact that the set is dense in another doesn't mean that the measure is, is big, okay? So why? A first example. A set that has, which is dense, for instance, focus on zero one. A set which is dense in zero one but has very small yeah, exactly. No? This is a set, they are dense, but the measure is zero. So somehow you can also construct, uh, okay, the set of rational, of course, is measure zero. So, But you can construct also some set which has um, T positive measure, but uh, um, as small as you want. So now we will see some construction. So I mean, the, the aim of, of the, all this argument, of this lecture, is somehow to, to relate some topological property of the set with, with the notion of measure, OK? OK, so you can construct a set which is dense in 0, 1, but whose measure is less than 1 and as small as you want, OK? OK, so consider, again, an enumeration of the rational number, where we start from that. Of rational number in zero one. <coughs> OK, 
Okay. So, okay, call them. Uh, so this is Q intersected 0, 1. Call them, for instance, Qn. Okay. And fix uh, an epsilon. So quantity which might be small as, as much as you want between 0 and 1 over 2. And consider this open interval. This is uh, actually um, a countable sequence of open interval. And consider this open intervals uh, of the type uh, uh, Qn minus epsilon over 2n and qn plus epsilon over 2n. Okay. Okay, we compute the measure of this. Okay, the measure of qn minus epsilon 2n qn plus epsilon 2n. Oh, is equal to epsilon over to n. Okay, and again, consider it the union over n of this interval. Okay, so consider their union. So call it this um, italic u if you want. So this is the union over n of qn minus epsilon to n qn plus epsilon to n. Okay, and take the intersection with uh, to be with zero one. So we have that all of this is contained in zero one. Okay, so we have that u is open and uh, u contains q intersected zero one. Okay, now we can see that u, the closure of u, contains q intersected zero one, which is zero one. At the same time, u is contained in zero one, so it may it it must coincide. So u is dense in zero one. Okay, but what about the measure of this set uh, uh, italic u? We have that the measure of u is less or equal by monotonicity to the sum of the measure of the set our interval which is uh, the sum of, uh, okay, you have two epsilon, two to the minus n, which should be equal to two epsilon, which is less than one. So you can make it as, as small as you want, okay? And so the measure of u, okay, is less than one. Okay, now, so we constructed this set italic u. So what about the boundary of u? how it looks like, what, which property it has. So 
What about? Is uh, the boundary view. Okay, we observe that since okay, since U is dense in zero one, just prove it. Okay, we have that. We have that delta u is equal to zero one minus u. And the measure of delta u is is larger then 1 minus 2 epsilon. This comes from subadditivity. OK, then we have that delta u is a closed set. Being the complement of an open set. And uh, we have that the interior of delta u is is empty since the complement since the complement of delta u which is dense in zero one. Okay, so all this uh, construction, so what can we learn by this? Just to somehow to warn you that the measure of a set does not coincide in general with the measure of uh, its interior or with its, its closure, okay? This happens for interval or for elementary set. But in general, this is a kind of warning that this example, you have that. This is as positive measure, but the interior as a zero measure. So the, the measure does not coincide. So this is the warning that the measure of a set of a set in general is not the measure of the closure of the set. or the measure of the interior. So think at this delta u. OK. This, because if you think at um, elementary set, the interval, uh, you cannot find uh, a counterexample. So you, you have to. to to, to use this somehow, some construction, OK? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 but this is, yeah, sure. I, I, this is also to, to um, 
an example for the interior, I mean, of the set, okay? I mean, it's true. This is a, this is a correct example for the, the, the closure of the set does not coincide with the measure for the closure. For the interior, you can use this. Okay, now we have that. We will prove that the Cantor set is, uh, is uncountable. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, to, um, to prove this, we will need to, um, to study uh, the ternary expansion of, uh, of the point in zero one, okay? Okay, so I just recall you some very easy fact uh, concerning uh, decimal numbers. Okay, so for instance, uh, we know uh, that the representation of, of decimal numbers is not unique, okay? But at least we know that there are at most two types of non-uniqueness, non okay? Just, i just give you some example. Okay, um, a remark. Okay, the um, okay, the decimal representa representation of, uh, no, okay, okay, um, decimal representation of number, of the, no, it's not, it's not correct. The representation of decimal number. is not unique. Okay. So we I will recall you this by an example. For instance, if you have the number zero nine nine. So with infinitely many nine, this is this is what? This is what, <laughs> this is one, no? I mean, if you have infinitely many, you, c you can express one either as one or as zero with infinitely many nine after the comma, okay? Eh? It's not okay? I mean, this, this is a, uh, okay, believe me. <laughs> this is a, a uh, no, no, you have infinitely many. Think of the theory if you want. Okay? Is it okay for you? Okay. This is a somehow element. Okay. In general, no, in general, it's true. So if you, if you express this as a series, okay, uh, no, you, you, can, you can easily check that, the, that it is, it indeed, it leads you to one. So here, the aim is to say that you can express, for instance, one in two, in two ways, just easily as one, or in this way, okay? Uh, okay, and uh, what is interesting that somehow it's, it's good for us that there are just these two kind of non-uniqueness, okay? You cannot express in other way one, or either as one or in this case, and this also. So in general, you have the following situation. Uh, so focus on number in, in zero one. Uh, so you have that. Uh, okay, if you have if you have two 
to representation If you have two representation of the same number, mm, in uh, in zero one, so you you can you will end up just with two situation, at most two. So for instance, you have uh, uh, 0, uh, comma, a1, okay, a2, a3, and so on. And here we have a 0, dot b1, b, uh, okay, b1, b3, okay. Okay, assume that the number is the same. So what about their digits? So you have two possibility. So so you have, okay, two representation of the same number, so the number, they are equal. They are equal, they are the same number. Okay, either the digits are, uh, they coincide, so either ai is equal to bi, or what? Or you have that, or there exists some index k, such that bi is equal to 9 for any i larger than k and ai is equal to 0 for any i larger than k and moreover you have that bk is equal to ak minus 1 and aj is equal to bj or any j less than k. So, I mean, if you have, I mean, if you have, you have two representation, you are sure that this is the same number, okay? So either, okay, this is the trivial case, uh, they coincide for any index, or you have this situation, which maybe with an example is, is more clear, which is, which is the same, of, same situation of here. I mean, for instance, you have 0, 2. You can write it as 0, 2, or 0, 1, and infinitely many 9, OK? This is, this is the trick, OK? I mean, this is in, I mean, it's just, I mean, this is just to, to write. But just focus on this. These are only two. Eh? The second case, yes, yes, this is the second case, yeah. I mean, the first one is trivial, okay, it's just two. Okay, but now, I mean, we are interested in, um, um, in the ternary expansion, okay, you can, this is, I mean, we are used to, to deal with the, the decimal, decimal one, but we are interested in the ternary expansion because in the counter set, we started to construct it by removing uh, this, um, the interval, for instance, was 1 over 3, 2 over 3, so of length, which is uh, uh, multiple of 1 over 3, okay? But you, you, can say, you can say the same things, no? Okay, also for the ternary expansion, okay? Uh, okay, for the ternary expansion, of course, you are allowed to use just uh, three digits, which are zero, so the ternary expansion, expansion 
of uh, numbers in zero one you have uh, three digits zero one and two okay so in analogy with uh, you have three these are digits these are the digits that you use when you when you deal with the, with the ternary expansion I mean, this is an analogy, for instance, with the binary representation of number. It's the same thing. So, but you use basis three, okay? Okay. So, for instance, if you have uh, okay, just to recall you the n the number when you when you uh, when you the number. Zero, zero, two, two, one, one. What is this number in the in the ternary representation? Is two over three to the power two. Okay, because this is place two. This is place one. This is place three. This is place four and this is place five plus two three over three ah, three over three plus one three over four plus one over three to the five. Okay, this is an example, okay? Okay, so we need this because <coughs> what we want to do is to, uh, to characterize uh, the points in the Cantor set by means of their ternary representation, okay? We need to do this in order to, to study the cardinality of the Cantor set. You will see it's, it's very easy, I mean, it's not nothing. Okay. So this is a question for you. So what are the numbers representation in base 3 has the first digit after the comma equal to 0. Okay, for instance, of this type is an example. I just recall you the first approximation of the counter set. So where they are located in this in this interval? I recall you that zero one is what? Is one? This is the, the limit, no? Yeah, one over three. So here they are here, okay? This kind of number are here, okay? Okay. In analogy, you can see that uh, the numbers whose representation base three has uh, first digit equal to two. They were they. 
in, in, the, in, the, in the right will be located here. Okay? This is a way to, to pass, uh, so to characterize uh, the, the number of, uh, of the counter set. So we start by characterizing them um, with the approximation of the counter set. Okay? Okay, so here, okay, here we have the one which has first digit here. This is the first digit. Is uh, uh, is two, okay? Okay, so we have that because two is 2 over uh, 0 to 2 is 2. I am, um, mm, okay, this is just a warning because Okay, we can characterize with no problem the point uh, which are uh, strictly less than 1 over 3 in, the, in that way, okay? But uh, uh, when, uh, when dealing with the counter set, we want to take the closed interval, okay? We are dealing with the closed interval, so we, we should include also this number 1 over 3, which is uh, in the ternary expansion is 0.1. So it doesn't fall here because it's, he has one after the comma, okay? But uh, we recall that we can express it in another way, okay? You, you, can, you can express it as, for instance, zero, zero with many two, okay? So we use this, okay? So in that way, we know that we can exactly represent all the numbers in the closet with this way, and the same, and the same argument is valid for, for this, okay? Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so, of course, uh, the role of nine is replaced by two here, okay? The role of nine, the decimal representation is replaced by two in the ternary expansion. Okay, so what is K9? We want to, uh, to characterize this, the nth um, approximation of the, the counter set. Uh, K9 is uh, the set of points in the closed interval 0, 1, such that if x has uh, just to be uh, precise as at least, because we know that it's not it can have another representation, at least a ternary expansion, expansion whose first digits, uh, whose first uh, n digits belongs to the set 0, 2. Okay, so this is a kind of generalization of what we observe for the set K1, okay? If you think you can characterize Kn. Okay, we know that K is the intersection of Kn. So what can we say using this? This representation, so x, the counter set, will be uh, the set of point x in 0, 1, uh, such that x has at least okay, a ternary expansion whose digits, so all of them, uh, belong, uh, uh, belong to uh, 
zero two. Okay, this is zero two. two. Okay, so this so in this way we characterize uh, the element of of the counter set. Okay, so what we what we what we learn by this? So by all this construction, we can deduce the following things: that um, K, the Cantor set, is in one-to-one -one correspondence. So one. one uh, correspondence uh, of the set of sequence uh, with the set of sequence with values uh, in uh, zero two. Okay, because of because of this. Okay, this is you can denote this set of sequences. Um, this is a, a way to denote it to the rise to the n. Okay. Okay. So, but you have that zero two. This set of sequence with values in zero two that I denoted with this uh, symbol. What are our function, which is a function which whose domain is is n, the domain of natural numbers with values in zero one, in zero two. Okay, and this is in one to one correspondence. with uh, the set of parts of P n. OK, this a way to, uh, to see this is uh, so just, I mean, you can see this is if, uh, if f is uh, a set, is an element uh, in the set of parts of P n, you can define a sequence which is uh, as associated to f in this way. So you can define a n the sequence which is uh, equal, uh, whose general term a n is equal, for instance, to 2, if uh, uh, n belongs to f and is equal to 0, otherwise. OK, this is a way to put this, uh, to, to establish this uh, one to one correspondence. OK, but. So if we put all together, we, say, we see that k is in one-to-one -one correspondent with p of n, OK? OK, and uh, okay, this is by, let me con continue this chain of correspondence. This is in one-to-one -one correspondent with zero one, okay? This is a result of uh, set theory, okay? One to one. Okay, so we, so if you gather all these uh, correspondent together, what you, you get, so combining uh, this, this result, We have that k, our counter set, is in one-to-one -one correspondence with, with zero one. OK. So OK, you have that k is not countable. But has 
the same cardinality. of 0, 1, even if it is uh, measure 0, OK? Because it's in 1 to 1 corresponding, OK? OK. OK, now, in the last OK, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. I don't know how many. We will define uh, the counter function. Okay, you can also um, okay if you want you can also say that if we saw that as a remark if you want this okay we we saw right from the beginning that if a is countable. then the measure of A is 0, OK? But in the converse is not true, OK, because of the counters, because of K, because of K for instance, OK. OK, now, thanks to the counter set, we can define the counter function which has also very nice properties. So in step what, with what we did for constructing the cantor set, we will also construct the cantor function by means of, uh, of approximation of it, OK? So this, this will be somehow some properties of the function of this counter function that we are going to construct. So it will take it, uh, it is defined in 0, 1, takes value here, and we have that uh, is continuous counter function f. Okay, it is continuous, it is non decreasing. is surjective and uh, and constant on each uh, connected component of 0, 1, minus k. <coughs> OK, this is given as a union of uh, open intervals. OK. Hmm? It is? And constant, 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 constant yeah, on each connected component. So what is nice, for instance, one of the things that should be uh, observed that the counter function is as zero derivative out of the counter set because it's constant there, but is not. I mean, but it it is not. It, it's an increasing function. Okay, 
because the Cantor set somehow it's small, has zero measure, but somehow not that small that doesn't allow the, the, the function to increase, okay? Okay, so we call, we call a n uh, the set zero one minus k n. K n is the nth approximation of the, the Cantor set. Okay, then we have that a n consists of uh, two to the power n minus one uh, open intervals. Is made of two and minus one okay, intervals, um, call them I and J, uh, okay, ordered from instant from the left to the right. Uh, these are the intervals which are removed on, on each step, okay, of the construction. Okay, now we, we want to define uh, the counter function as an approximation, no, as a limit of, uh, of some uh, approximation. So let Fn be the continuous function on zero, one, uh, which such that we have that fn of zero is equal to zero, fn of one is equal to one, and in the middle you have that fn of x is equal to j to, to the minus n on this interval. And then it is defined, so j1, 2, 2, n minus 1, and which is linear on each, on each interval. Okay, so for instance, uh, just to, uh, to visualize, you have something like this. Okay, assume that you, you consider F1 and F2, okay? So you have something, a situation of this type. Okay, here is zero, here is one, and then you had uh, one over three and two over three. So the approximation of one is, uh, is like this. Okay, it's one over two, it's something like this. To. Okay, this is F1, okay? Okay, what about F2? F2 is you have to, to consider this 2 over 9 and here 7 over 9 and 8 over 9. So the other one here 1 over 4 and 3 over 4. So you, you have and here is made like this, here is like this, here you have that goes from here to here, then it's like this and like this. This is okay, maybe I can dash it. You can represent it. So F1 is, is denoted with the straight line, and F2 is the one with the dashed line, okay? 
I don't have a color at chest, so I don't know how to distinguish them. So, okay. Okay, now we observe what uh, we have that by construction. We have that fn plus 1 is equal to fn on i n j. So in this case, they coincide here in the middle. And you have that fn minus fn plus 1 is less than 2 minus n. So what you get finally is that the sum of fn minus fn plus 1 converts uniformly in 0, 1. So you can deduce that fn is a Cauchy sequence in, uh, in, in 0, 1, so it admits limit, and so we set f, so the counter function, as the limit in, in a uniform norm, of course, of the, of the fn, f is the uniform, mm. okay, uniform uh, limit. Of, uh, of the fan. And okay, then uh, you, you can see that, of course, it, um, it preserves uh, some properties of, uh, of the fan. So you have that f of 1 is 1, is non decreasing, and, uh, and it satisfies the property that, uh, that I mentioned before. Yeah. Sorry? F1. Yeah. You have a problem here, okay. F1. F1 is increasing. It's increasing, but we make that for F1, not for F2. Ah, okay, okay, then, okay. <laughs> Sorry, then reverse. So that's. Uh, Ah, okay, no, I did, yes, I know what you mean. Okay, so here, okay, here, okay, then it should be like this. Okay, now it, okay, here they go inside, so I don't touch. Okay, so I think that for today we can stop here. Because, yeah.